Welcome to a brand new wonderful day of critical thinking. Hope you guys had fun making the scratch assignments. Let's see if we can get a run out of this. Copy paste into Discord. Have you updated attendance? Uh, I just took attendance, so I'll update it later today. The bot doesn't always work, so it's not exactly one-to-one. -one. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't make it myself. <laughs> All right. So a lot of comments that were given on discord said that you guys want more practice with valid and valid and sound. So let's do more. Let's do more. So, hmm. Okay. Okay, so there's going to be three options. Uh, option one, invalid. The logic does not follow. It doesn't matter if you agree or disagree with the conclusion, or even if it seems right or whatever. The logic doesn't work, it is invalid. Okay. Most common sources of invalidity are you know, uh, denying the antecedent and affirming. Option two valid but not sound. The logic does follow but one or more premise are not true. Um, um, sometimes I'll, I'll have a premise like um, you know I like eating cake or something like that. Um, Give me the benefit of the doubt on premises mm. so like all cats have four legs is false but if it rains I will bring my umbrella uh, Uh, but like if I say if it rains I'll bring my umbrella assume those are true like you know in general that I'm being truthful you know or I will go do this or uh, you know then option three uh, valid and sound logic follows and all the premises are true. Okay. So it's going to be your job to pick out which one of these three options are correct. And uh, option two, I oftentimes will just say valid, you know, as sort of a shortcut for uh, valid but not sound. But in, in reality, uh, option three is valid also. It's valid and sound. And option two is valid but not sound. So both two and three are valid, but I'll, I'll typically uh, yeah, shorten these by saying invalid, valid, or sound is the, the three options. Okay. And so um, if the logic doesn't follow, it doesn't matter if the um, it doesn't matter if the premises are true actually. So there's no invalid bit sound. That's not a thing. If the if the logic doesn't work, that's it. You're done. It's a bad argument. Now, 
some people say a valid but not sound argument is, is a bad argument. And it it can be. It can be a bad argument. But uh, sometimes uh, arguments that are valid but not sound are simply conditionally true, right? Like the example I gave last time was, if there is a zombie apocalypse, you know, buy a chainsaw, right? So it's an argument that right now is, you know, not sound because there's no zombie apocalypse right now. But if one did happen, then it would be an, an argument you can pull out of your pocket and be like, all right, I know what to do. Um, so. All right. Uh, quiz is kind of confusing. Yeah. It, this is a classic um, hard thing that students just need to wrap their, their mind around. So we're going to do more. Uh, valid but not sound or simply conditionally not true. It depends, right? So like if I say that, um, uh, for example, premise one, uh, all spiders have uh, all creatures with eight legs are spiders. Premise two, um, cats have eight legs. Conclusion. Before cats are spiders, and you're welcome for that mental imagery right there. So, is this, you know, is this argument conditionally true? No, not really. Um, it's just it's wrong. It's a bad argument. So, some some valid. Uh, this argument is valid. This is a valid argument, right? And and this is this is something that. Again, the, the mental logic that a lot of students go through is um, they just look at the conclusion. Therefore, cats are spiders. And they're like, oh, well, I know that's wrong. You know, and then they're like, uh, this is invalid. You know, and nah, it, it's not. This is a valid argument. All creatures with eight legs are spiders. Cats have eight legs. So there's a group that's defined by having eight legs. Cats are a member of that group. Therefore, they're a member of the group. Like the logic of that is perfectly correct. The trouble is, like, the premise two is, is, you know, wrong, right? Arguably, premise one is wrong, too, but I guess you could, I don't know, maybe have a centipede that lost some legs, that, you know, so. So it is valid because it flows, but the premise makes it not sound. That is absolutely correct. Yeah, so this argument here is valid. What happened? Valid, but not sound, and it, and and it's not conditionally true. Like it's just it's just a bad argument, you know. However, if I say um, um, if um, if I get uh, coronavirus, I should. I don't know. Give a hug to it now. <laughs> uh, what should I do if I get coronavirus? Uh, I might be a little bit too close to home. Uh, if I... Let's see. Hmm. My house burns down. I should find shelter for my family. My house has burned down. Conclusion. Therefore, I should find shelter for my family. So this is, uh, this is also valid, but not sound. All right. As you can see behind me, my house so far has not burned down. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, 2020, uh, you know, is, is over, but who knows? Who knows what'll happen in 2021? So, uh, so this this argument is conditionally true, right? Like, or it's it's more like uh, uh, it, it's not sound right now, but you know, it the, the logic works, and and maybe someday it'll be true, and and so like a, a lot of a lot of um, medical advice, like. Uh, if you ever read like a first aid book, it'll say like, if the person's artery is cut, you should tourniquet it. You know what I mean? And so there's a lot of arguments like that that are valid but not sound. But someday if the premise becomes true, 
then it becomes valid and sound and you really need to know like to tourniquet somebody or to find shelter for your family or to buy a chainsaw in case of the zombie apocalypse and things like that do you guys understand so valid but not sound isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world you know like it's better than invalid let's put it that way but a lot of times if an, if an argument's not sound then you know you can simply discard it okay okay so let's do some examples you guys ready we're gonna get more practice and i will put up another quiz on valid and valid and sound Ryan, so you have diogenes man chicken dilemma yeah diogenes was uh, a boss philosopher who lived in a barrel uh in athens and was basically a giant troll uh to everyone socrates included i think plato defined it a, uh, a man as a featherless biped and so he plucked a chicken and held it out and said behold a man yeah. I already got a three out of three don't make me do it again uh, we can do like a best out of two or something like that I don't know alright wait so it's not sound only because my house isn't burned down yeah uh, yeah exactly Pr premise two was my house is burned down it's wrong I mean I sure hope so <laughs> right so uh this is this is not sound right because the one or more uh premise is not true right so that is not true right. Go. so if you're working with incomplete information what do you do as far as we could know your house is burned in you're in a hotel um yeah that's that's uh you know that's why i say like if if there's there's a certain uh, benefit the doubt, right? Like, you know, in this case, like you can tell my house isn't burned down. Uh, but for things like all cats have four legs is wrong because some cats have lost a leg, you know, so that'd be a false, a false premise. Um, right. But in general, like if I say I like eating chocolate cake in general on, on opinions and things like that, just see what I'm telling the truth. I don't like making questions like that because let like, you have no idea of knowing if I like chocolate cake or not, you know? So I, I typically make questions where that's not really uh, up in the air, right? I like lemon meringue pie. Well, you, you have no idea, right? And so sometimes when I do that, I'll be like, um, I'll, I'll be like this, like, I like lemon mer... Ah, oh, jeez, how do you spell meringue? Uh, let's go with chocolate cake instead. Chocolate <laughs> Uh, I like chocolate cake, and then I'll I'll do something like this and be like uh, assume this is true. Like I'll I'll do something like that, right? Like on a question, like like if you don't know if, if the premise is true or not, I'll actually like just give it to you. Like this this premise is true. Right? Like I, I do actually like chocolate cake, right? And this this uh, t-shirt is is green. <laughs> Meringue, yeah. Meringue, I like. Lemon meringue. There we go. Let's see this. Okay. Yeah. So, so I guess if you got a three out of three on the quiz, you don't have to do this one. We'll we'll give we'll do it. We'll do a best out of two. How about that? Okay. But you can you can take it just for fun because it'll it'll give you more it'll give you more practice for the uh, midterm next Thursday. Next. Friday. We graduate early if you got a three out of three. Uh, <laughs> you just drop out of the lecture right now. No, it's no, it's 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 good it's good practice. Okay. So So let's do some examples. Alright, here we go. Tack these up last night. Okay, premise one. When Fresno when Fresno is in the purple level of coronavirus rates, hair salons in Fresno are closed. Fresno is currently in the red tier of uh, coronavirus rates. Therefore, hair salons in Fresno are open. Valid, invalid, or sound.
What do you think? It's like dead silence on the Discord channel. And I do think we're actually in the red tier right now, are we? Let's assume this is true. So we got a bunch of valids, a couple sounds. Um, right, so all of you are wrong. This is actually an invalid argument. Boom. I've been playing some Red Dead online. Um, yeah, this is invalid. Why? So, uh, let's put this in terms of logic. Uh, X implies Y. If we're in the purple tier, if we're in the purple tier, then uh, Y is true. And we say not X, and we conclude from this, uh, uh, yeah. let's grab the therefore symbol how I make the midterm. Copy. There we go. Therefore, not why. Okay. What a uh, what fallacy is this? Very good, Mitchell. This is denying the antecedent. So. I didn't say anything about what would happen if Fresno is not in the purple tier. I said if Fresno is in the purple tier, hair salons must be closed. I didn't say anything about what would happen if it's not in the purple tier. It's possible it's nighttime, right, or, or whatever, you know? Like, even even if we're in the red tier at nighttime, they're closed, right? And so, um, yeah, this is a classic uh, classic example of, peop of, of, a, of an argument looking like it's valid and sound. Um, and uh, I, I wasn't actually in, intending for you guys to say valid but not sound. I don't know if you're like splitting the difference on it. But um, yeah, this is a classic invalid argument. And it, and it looks like it should be right because the way the English language works is we're, we're, used, to, we're used to doing this, right? If, if, you know, if and only if, if, right? So X implies Y, not X implies not Y, all right? But that's not actually what I said. What I said was if, if Fresno's in the purple tier, here in salons are closed, I didn't see anything about anything not in the purple tier. No. All right, I can't tell what is is. <laughs> okay, so, all right, next one up, next one up. Uh, and and put yourselves out there. Put yourselves out there. Don't be afraid to get it wrong. Um, it's not like I'm gonna be like that kid from The Simpsons going ha ha and pointing at you. Um, it, in in all honesty, this is the learning process, right? Making mistakes is part of the learning process. Some students are terrified of being wrong. Like the professor will know. The professor will know that I haven't taken CSI one before. Well, yeah, I know, dude. Like, that's why you're in my class. <laughs> you're in my class because you've not taken this before. It's normal to make mistakes. And, uh, you know, getting it wrong on Discord doesn't cost you any points, right? And you'll learn more if you do. Okay. When I am bored, I write computer programs for fun. I assume this is true. You know, again, you know, if I say something along those lines. Okay. So when I am bored, I write computer programs for fun. And it, it, is, it is, in fact, true. I am not writing computer programs for fun right now. Let's say. Therefore, I am not bored. Is this valid, invalid, or sound?
So, it looks like, it looks like, Jose Martinez is the only person to get it right. This is a sound argument. Boom. I'm just going to save this. Okay. I, one person got it right out of everyone on Discord. And, uh, and again, this is the learning process. It seems like it should be wrong. So break it down, write, write out the logic. If X, then Y. If I am bored, then I'm writing computer programs for fun. Not Y. I'm not currently writing computer programs for fun. Therefore, damn it. Therefore, symbol, again, I should keep this. <laughs> Keep that in there. Boop. And I do know that the window that uh, Office has a symbol insert in here, but it's kind of garbage, so I don't use it. It's easier to just look it up on Wikipedia. Therefore, not X. So this is a type of argument called modus tollens. So there's there's two types of there's two types of valid argument, and there's with inferences, and there's two types of invalid ones. And so this is called modus uh, tollens or modus toyens, I've heard some people call it. Um, and so if x was true, then y would have to be true. But we know that y is false, and so it is not possible for x to be true. Because if x was true, y would be true. But we know y is not true. If, if uh, the Chargers win the Super Bowl... Um, I'd give you five bucks. I didn't give you five bucks. Therefore, I know that the Chargers didn't win this year. Okay. He's enjoying our pain. That's why he's not bored. <laughs> right. So the uh, this this is a valid form of inference, and so you have to recognize um, you have to recognize all four forms, right? So I'll just I'll just summarize these for you guys. Okay. Bonus ponens, x implies y, x paste y. Okay, this is your standard deductive argument. Over the font. Alright, so this is valid, and this is a valid form, and this is a valid form. X implies Y, X is true, Y is true, therefore Y is true. Um, uh, if I have, now, yeah. if I've eaten a lot of pasta, I'll be full. I've eaten a lot of pasta, therefore I'm full. It's standard deduction. And then modus tollens is the one that students always have trouble with because it, you know, it, it seems like invalid form, there is denying the antecedent this is a fallacy, which is x implies y, not x. Therefore, not y. And the other fallacy is called affirming the consequent. these things look similar, right? But these are the four options for implications. Okay, two of them work, two of them don't work, and you have to, you have to just learn them, right? And that's why that's why we're doing these things because your your English brain will will draw you astray. And this this looks like I don't know algebra or you know kind of scary I don't know, but. The, the reality of the situation is like this this applies in real life as well you know when you're when you're talking about um, people in real life making arguments um, they make fallacious arguments all the time okay. let's do some more now that you won't trust me 
Maybe this one finally would be easy. If Valheim was a good game, it would sell well. Valheim is selling well. Therefore, Valheim is a good game. And let's see if this is true. Valid, invalid, or sound. Got some valids, some sounds, some invalids. Um, all right, so for those of you that are saying it is valid but not sound, I've already given you this is true. So you're you're arguing like if, if like are you, you know like if, if you're gonna say this is valid but not sound, then you're arguing that Valheim is not selling well. That that's what you're saying for everybody out there that said valid. You're just taking, taking a guess at that. Um, then that's that's what you're saying. Like if you're saying this is valid but not sound, I've already given you this to be true. So you're arguing that it's not selling well. And so let's find out if you're right. Number one game. Yeah, so it's selling fine. Okay. So uh, we can we can exclude valid but not sound. Valheim is, is the number one selling game on Steam right now. It's doing fine. So we're left with invalid and we're left with valid and sound. Okay, or sound for short. So which one is it? How much is it? 20 bucks. And uh, I've been I've been having a fun time playing it. It's uh, it's an enjoyable game. Uh, I don't know how much um, content there is you know total for it. It's it is early access, but um, it's kind of neat to be able to build a long house and boats and go sailing and stuff like that. The the downside is your beard just starts growing really fast. You know that's that's the risk when you whenever you play a good Viking game. Um, sponsored stream, yeah, yeah. Brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Ah. All right, so this is invalid. Okay, this is invalid. The reason why it's invalid, the form of this argument is: if Valheim was a good game, it would sell well. It's selling well, therefore. It's a good game. So, it's always possible that uh, it would sell well despite not being a good game. Look at a lot of the games that EA makes. <clears throat> EA makes a lot of games that aren't especially good and sell well nonetheless. Because they're franchise games. Okay. Go Madden. Raid Shadow Legends has infiltrated the American education system. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I vomited a little bit saying that. Okay, um, so yeah, so this is this is a, a fallacy called affirming the consequent, right? right. It is a good game. Though. <laughs> so th this is this is this is what I'm kind of getting at, is that you can um, have arguments that you agree with, right? Like it doesn't matter, you know. It doesn't matter if you agree or disagree with the the, the conclusion. It doesn't even matter if it seems right. 
you have to sit there and like look at the logic of it right if x then y y therefore x nope that is affirming the consequence and i i do actually think valheim is a good game that doesn't make my argument valid it doesn't make my argument sound despite both of these premises are true both of these premises are true i agree with the conclusion so the the human instinct is to say this is a sound argument right um yeah, the people saying it was valid but not sound, you're, you're in kind of a weird predicament because you've got to, you've got to justify that Valheim's not selling well and it's kind of hard to do when it's a, the number one game. Right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's do another one. Hope you guys are having fun, by the way. So this, is, this is something that every person needs to wrap their brains around and it, it's, not, it's not easy. Right? Okay. I like learning anything hard. And let's say this is true. Valid, invalid, or sound. I like learning anything hard. Premise two, Japanese is a hard language to learn. Conclusion, therefore, I like learning Japanese. EA is being carried by Apex Legends right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if the world would be a better place if EA went out of business or something. I don't, I don't think it would be. I mean, they, they kind of serve a need, you know. They kind of serve a need. All right, so we got everybody saying sound so far. Yeah. No, I've had friends that, that have worked on you know, Madden and, and things like that. And there's very little innovation, you know. Invalid just because you're just guessing. <laughs> Don't guess. Don't guess. Work out, work through the logic, right? Work through the logic. If something is hard, then I like learning it. And, and notice how in English, um, you, it doesn't necessarily, like you have to, like it doesn't, you don't put X always first, right? If it's hard, I like learning it. it. Sounds weird, right? So I said I like learning anything hard, but that means if it's hard, I like learning it. Uh, Japanese is hard, therefore, it's bonus opponents. Okay, so this is a valid argument, right? So if it's hard, I like learning it. Japanese is hard, therefore, I like learning Japanese. And so, um, so the form of the, the form of the argument works. Right? I like learning anything hard. Japanese is hard. Therefore, I like learning Japanese. Um, is this a true premise? So is it valid but not sound, or is it sound? So those of you that are, are, that are arguing valid but not sound, you're arguing that Japanese is not a hard language to learn. So if, for everybody who, who put valid out there, if you said valid, you're arguing that Japanese is easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's entirely opinion based. Interesting question. Let's go to the US government who has ranked languages by difficulty. Easiest languages to learn, Spanish, French. Yeah, it makes me sad, man. I took two years of French and, you know, I can I can get a hotel in France. That's about it. Uh, oh, there it is. Category five. Languages which are exceptionally difficult. Japanese. Boom. Yeah. So, uh, this is, in fact, sound. <laughs> uh, watches anime sub for one year fluent Japanese speaker like 80 year old grandpa in Japan uh, yeah m my wife can do that um, but you know, objectively speaking Japanese is, is a hard language um, so the amount of inside baseball required for some of these questions is nutty 
uh, on midterms and quizzes. I don't like you saw from last time. I don't I don't give you I don't give you questions like this or Valheim is selling well. Like you don't I'm not going to give you things like that on a test. But for now, where there's no points at you know in play, sure I will absolutely <laughs> I will absolutely throw these curveballs at you. Omaiwa mo shinderu. Uh, he just does a little trolling. It's called he does a little trolling. Yeah, that's right. If you can't troll your students, then who can you troll? Right. Okay. <laughs> Not he intensifies. Uh, yeah. And Japanese is fun, actually. It is a fun language to learn. I'm taking Japanese too right now. Second semester of Japanese, and uh, so I enjoy it. Okay, very simple. Uh, very similar. Uh, argument. I like learning anything hard. Let's assume this is true. I like learning anything hard. Wood is hard. Therefore, I like learning wood. Is that a JoJo's reference? No, that's a Fist of the North Star. O Omai is a, like a very casual, almost rude form of you. Amai wa wa is the topic marker. Speaking of you, uh, moi means already, kind of. Um, uh, shinderu. Uh, uh, shin is death. And so uh, shinde is the te form of dead. dead. Um, so you're already dead, basically. So he tells the guy you're already dead. And the guy's like, what? And then he explodes. He's in Fist of the North Star. He has like this pressure point technique that, you know, five seconds later the person's body explodes. It's a very violent anime. Don't watch it, you know, if you are uh, if you don't like violence. All right, so... Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is, this is an equivocation fallacy. So this is the first... Uh, equivocation fallacy. So this is um, invalid. And this is the first one we've done that is not one of the f four, you know, traditional argument forms. Uh, in this case, hard means difficult. Right? It's difficult to learn. I like learning anything difficult. Uh, in this case, it's talking about actual physical hardness. Right, so uh, this is an equivocation fallacy. It's not. It's not valid. Equivocation is when you use the same word to make it look like because it's the same. It's the same form, right, as what we had before. I like learning anything hard. Japanese is hard, therefore I like learning Japanese. Um, in that case, I'm using the word hard in the same sense of the word difficult. In this case, I'm you know using I like learning anything difficult. Wood is physically hard like they're two separate senses of the word hard and so that's it. I'm equivocating on the word hard here and so this is this is invalid okay. I like learning wood yeah and the conclusion should make it obvious that there's something uh, something weird going on there all right um, last one there we go the ISBN system gives a unique book identifier to each different publication. Books A and B have different ISBN numbers, therefore A and B are different publications. Two people have responded so far. So how would you break this down? What is the form of this argument?
How would you how would you write this logically speaking? ISBN system gives a unique book identifier to each different publication. How would you write that logically? If what then what? A lot of people typing, nobody hitting return on Discord. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. All right, let's see if we can work through this. Um, this is technically true, and we could probably go into a little bit more detail on this, but um, yeah, let's say this is true. Um, so if you publish the same book, but with a variant, it'll actually get a different ISBN number. Uh, every, every book you have, let me just grab a random book off my bookshelf here. So here we have the Maker's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. But I was joking about that chainsaw thing, right? So different things you can build in case you know, zombies attack you. Um, mm -hmm. The, the back, there is a barcode, and the barcode says ISBN number 978-1. So there's the ISBN, ISBN number in there. And if I flip to the front, how to defend your base with simple circuits, Arduino, and Raspberry Pi. And so I teach uh, computing using the Raspberry Pi in my fourth semester in computer science class at Clovis Community College. Uh, not this semester, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, but normally students work in groups and they build, uh, they do physical computing. So they actually have breadboards and wires and a controller and sensors. And, and so they'll do things like um, have a, a ultrasound sensor set up. And if it detects somebody walking in, it'll rotate and find where they are and then shoot ping pong balls at them and things like that. Um, Yep, and then the ISBN number is here as well. So, yeah, so the ISBN system, that's what it, that's what it does. It gives a unique, uh, it gives a unique number to each different publication. So could we write it like this? If the publication is different, then it gets a unique book identifier. Or we could write if it has a different book identifier, it gets, it is unique, a, a different, uh, is a different publication. Option A. Option B. Which one of these do you guys think is right? So what happens, like if you publish a book, you can buy an ISBN number for, I think it's $125. And uh, book publishers buy them in bulk. They buy a chunk of like 100,000 ISBN numbers at once. And um, like, you know, when they publish Harry Potter, Harry Potter, Chamber of Secrets will be issued a ISBN number by the publisher. And then if they re-release it into a different language, that gets a different ISBN number. Uh, if they re-release it with uh, different artwork, that gets a nice, every different edition, every sub-edition, every language, every variant that's published differently gets a unique book identifier. So which one of these is correct? That if you have two different publications and they're different, they have two different ISBN numbers, or if you look at it, and you have two different ISBN numbers, you know that they're different publications. So which one of these is true? If identifier A is not equal to B, they're different publications. Uh, yeah, uh, that's how the system works. If, if I were to just blindly open up one of these books here 
and check the ISBN number on it. If it has a different ISBN number, it is a different book. That is true. And it's also true that if the publication is different, it'll get a different unique book identifier. So in this case, both A and B are true. And so this is a case of X implies Y and Y implies X. So we can write it like this. If if x, then y. If and only if x, then y. It's another way of writing, writing it. So, uh, actually, a and b are both true. Okay. And so, in that case, knowing that uh, x, then y. So, this is a modus ponens argument here. fun. <laughs> it's fun. So I'll, I'll put up another quiz for you guys. So you can take another crack at it. Um, take another crack at it tonight before class on Friday. And it'll be a best of two. So uh, if you've already gotten a three out of three on the previous one, you know, whatever. You don't have to take it, I guess. I would probably take it anyway because it won't hurt your grade. And it will give you practice for the midterm. Okay. And for anything that's like Valheim's a best-selling game, like I, I'm not going to make you guys Google things like that. You know, it's, they're they're going to be things that are pretty much common sense, like cats are mammals, right? Like you should know that, <laughs> right? Cats are in fact mammals. Wait, so what was the answer? This is this is a sound argument. It's a sound argument. The um, uh, this premise is true. That's how the ISBN system works. So if I do, in fact, find uh, two different books that have different ISBN numbers, then I can conclude uh, they are different publications. And so uh, this is actually um, it's actually this argument is yeah. I thought you weren't giving us a midterm because we like video games. Nah, nah, you need, you need to, you need to, you need to do midterm. It's, it's a way of testing yourself. It's like a, it's like when you're playing Valheim, you know, and you've been playing it for a while. You got to test yourself, and so you have to summon the deer god and then you know light him up on fire. You know, will there be a reading this week? Uh, have to drive to work. Yeah, I mean that's the end of class today. So, uh, all we've really done today is just gone over the, the valid, invalid, and sound thing again, but. Uh, based on the number of comments that were left um, on Discord last week, I, I, I do read them, and um, this is this is the reason why I don't have a timeline for this class. It's because you know if I were to just move on and people don't understand the topic, then they're just not going to know it, and I'd rather people know it. So I, I always adjust the pacing of the class to uh, the students. You know, and what what they need, right? I don't have like a fixed timeline, and we're just on the train, you know, choo choo, and we're just gonna keep going. And there's a car that's on the train track, and we smash through it. We're just like, just keep going. We're on the timeline now. Nah, like, you know, I looked at the scores on the quiz, so we we spend an extra day on this today. Yep. Maybe I didn't have enough coffee last time. <laughs> Uh, usually writing them in the X implies Y form makes it easier to understand words can throw you off. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, and so, uh, once, once you write it down in X implies Y form, then you can see pretty clearly which one of these four it is. And, uh, you know, if you kind of defocus your eyes and stare blankly at it, then they'll all look very similar. But the reality of the situation is you can still work through, you can work through why these are invalid, right? Um, if you get an A, I'll give you 10 bucks. You didn't get an A, therefore, I can't give you 10 bucks. Um, it doesn't work because I did, you know, I might give you 10 bucks anyway. You know, you, you might do, you might wash dishes for me, right? So you, all of these things, you can come up with English explanations for why they're, why they're invalid and, and why they're valid. Uh, this one, this one is especially tricky for students. Um, if uh, if x is an even number, it's divisible by two. No, let's not use x. 
if i let's say i is an integer if i is an even number i is divisible by two then i is divisible by two i is not divisible by two therefore i know that i is not an even number right make sense i'll write it down i is an integer if i is even then it is then it is divisible by 2. i is not divisible by 2. Therefore, symbol i is not even. The font switched. Okay. Uh, the class is over. You, you guys, you guys. Is there a chapter reading this week? Yeah, I'll, I'll put up something on, on Canvas. Right. Alright, uh, that's it, you guys. Thank you. And um, please have a wonderful day. And um, I'll see you on Friday.